Thank you for allowing me the privilege every week to instruct you and inspire you to be an ambassador for truth. I don't know if you saw recently, listen to this, let me set the table. Franklin Graham spoke at Liberty University, 50th anniversary, and he challenged them and he said this, look it, he said, the world wants you to sit down and shut up. But he said, God wants you to be a champion and stand up and speak up. Watch, he looks a little older, but boy, he's bold as a lion. You see, I have no idea what God was going to do with my life. And there may be some of you here tonight, you just have no clue what God is going to do with your life. And when I graduate, people want to know, what was your plan? I didn't have a plan. <laughs> I was just going to make myself available to see what God would do. If you'll just make yourself available to God, you just watch what he's going to do. Franklin Graham is echoing something that is really the word of the Lord to us in this hour. We're not to put our heads in the sand. We're in a climactic time of history. The return of Jesus could be very soon, and we need to take a stand. Do you know, in Proverbs, it tells us this. Proverbs 28.1 says, when the wicked flee when, when no one pursues. In other words, they're guilty. They're wondering consequences. But it says the righteous are bold as a lion. That means courageous, and courage is contagious. You know, in Acts chapter 4, the authorities came to Peter and John. They said, stop preaching. We don't want you to talk about Jesus and the truth. And you know what they said? They said, look, uh, whether it be right in the eyes of God, man, whatever, you go ahead and judge. But as for us, we cannot be quiet and hold back from declaring what we've seen and heard. Now, I know that's your heart, but you need to be inspired. And I want to give you some examples, 10 of them. So hang with me. Number one, you know me. For over three years, I have made clear-cut stands in terms of uh, the radical progressive leftist extremists trying to topple this country. And Mr. Biden, I've said, I pray for him every day, but I say he's incapacitated mentally. He's incompetent. In fact, recently, did you see he fell again? Oh, my heart aches. Watch this. It's so sad to see this, but I've not wavered in terms of declaring the truth about having righteous people in government. And for leaders, we got to speak up. Recently, we had a gay pride event in Franklin, Tennessee, and I got my tracks. You know me. I go there to love people, listen to them, and give them the gospel, plant seeds, and I take my tracks. And so I went there. But you know, when I was there, all of a sudden, I was surrounded by three police and they told me, we're going to have to ask you to leave these grounds. You're not allowed to be taking pictures and you're not allowed to be uh, giving out the, 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 the whatever you're giving out here. And I thought, wait a minute. Well, I lifted up a quick little prayer and there was a councilwoman, Bev Berger, who's a dear friend, and we talked with the event coordinator and she reiterated that. But you know what? We know what the poster said, and there was no such restriction. We didn't cower, but you know what we did? We were respectful, we were civil, but we maintained our position. And we continued to do what we were allowed to do in terms of sharing and talking with people. How do you handle things when you're confronted? I recently wrote an article about boycotts, whether it's a personal boycott or it's something, you know, throughout history. And it's called, you can Google this, our Boycotts biblical, and you need the guidelines. There's five of them there. You can Google that. Are boycotts biblical? But you know what? We need to learn to take a stand. Now, let me give you some inspiring examples. I hope I inspire you with what I do and I continue on. But how about some of these examples? You know, with what's going on with transgenderism, trans madness. I don't know if you saw it on 60 Minutes, which was, by the way, introduced on CBS Celebrates Pride. That's what they come in. And then they're talking about kids in crisis, suicide, and girls in the past number of years, 50% increase in suicides. And then we get the stats, 42,000. They said young people today, in a year, they say they have gender dysphoria. And they were, they, they're saying, well, therapy, and we got to give drugs or what. They don't have the answers. We have the answers with the gospel, loving people, and then telling them the truth, what the Bible teaches. Well, in New York, 
There's people, they just put together a movie and it's a great film and it's on literally gender transformation. It's going to be coming out and it's to counter the deception and the lies. It's going to be coming out and it's dealing with the realities. That's taking a stand, being bold as a lion. How about this? Uh, uh, Matt Walsh, he lives in our area and he did a documentary called I, What is a Woman? What is a Woman? Have you heard about this? Well, Twitter tried to censor it. They tried to hold it back. They didn't want the truth going out. But thank God, Elon Musk, he didn't pull back and he overruled. And this documentary went out. And in a matter of weeks, 170 million people have viewed it. That's unprecedented and it's a record. But it's the truth and it's going out. I am a woman. In the church we went to yesterday, that's how the pastor opened. He talked about it. Pastors, speak up, educate, inspire, and instruct your people to be sons of Issachar today. Not only that, but how about this? Uh, Disney, people caught, and they put it out, and they show it viral. Disney, you go to Disneyland. I've been there many times. Here's a guy, a man, and he has a mustache, and he dresses in a, a, a dress, and he's outside the little girl's boutique. It's been exposed. People spoke up and showed what's going on, not only with Disney, but we see what's going on with Target trying to market a line to young people that would be transgender, LGBTQ, and even touting and celebrating Satan. Well, people speak up and the pushback has come, just like with Bud Light. This is not a day to be silent and we can see fruit as a result. Did you see also where in Vermont, there was a coach and his daughter in a middle school, he was fired. And the daughter was kicked out of the school. Why? Because they didn't want a teen boy in the girl's dress room. They said, no, transgender and all this kind of stuff. Well, what was the ruling? The court stood by them. The, the coach was reinstated. The girls back in school and the suit, they were sued. Guess what? The administrator and this, this coach and his daughter got a settlement of $124,000, but they didn't cower. They, they were bold. They were speaking up. How about with what's going on with the Dodgers today? Now, the LA Dodgers, we're going to have a night to honor, Pride Night and the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. Now, if you're not aware, these are men, they're transvestites, they're a hate group, and they mock the cross of Christ, and they, they mock the Eucharist. And they have no business being honored, but the Dodgers cowered. They said, we're not going to allow them. And then they got pressured, you know, Hollywood, LGBTQ active. Okay, we're sorry. And so they put them back up. But you know what? One of the best pitchers in baseball, you know, Mr. Kershaw, I love him. He said, no, I, I don't agree with this. This is disrespectful. He spoke up. And then another pitcher, a guy that pitched in the World Series, Blake, and, and he, he just said, look at he said, as for me and my house, we serve the Lord and people reap what they sow. And he spoke in a very bold way, even though he's a Dodger pitcher and said, this is wrong. It's mocking. And that's what we need. It's courage. He, he took that stand. I took a stand. Many of you know about 10 years ago on gay marriage. I was in a church. The leader says that'll be a deal breaker if you put out an educational video on this. Sure enough, a couple weeks later, whammo, they said, go and don't come back. Well, I have to depend on support now from people. But you know what? My wife, she said, as soon as I went home and told her, she said, thank God we're free. We have to be standing strong in this hour. How about this one? NBA, Jonathan Isaac. He said, with all this wokeism, I'm going to launch an apparel, sports and shirts that are going to counter it. That's being bold, strong. Uh, how, how about this one? Riley Gaines, you know who she is, the, the girl, the swimmer. She's from Kentucky and now she continues to speak out because she says biological men that say, well, you know, I'm a woman and I want to compete in sports have no business being in this. And, you know, she speaks out because what? Her and so many throughout this nation, they, they, they discipline themselves, they work, and they simply want to compete with fair competition with other girls. But some guy came along, as you know, Leah Thomas and what, you know, he, he competed a couple years before and he was like 554th, was it, in, in his rank. So he got in another, you know, division with now the, the women. He came in number one and he was even put forth by the NCAA, some of their activists and said he should be woman of the year. It's unfair. You know what some people have done? Maybe you read this, soccer. Uh, it, 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 there was a million dollar tournament 
And so the, some of the best women soccer players, they said, we'll be in this thing. We'll show you how good we can do. Well, you know, some group out of Wales, kind of average guys, they went up against the best of the women in the world and all that. Well, guess what? The, the, the women got blown out. You say, well, no, didn't they beat them? No, you know what? They, they beat them 12 to nothing. And the men scored, I believe it was seven goals in 20 minutes. It was an embarrassment. But why? Men and women are different, and we should respect women in their sports. Let me give you one more, and I, I just say thank you for this. Years ago, I went to an event where there was a false teacher at a university, and I just basically stood up at the end and I said, hey, uh, do you believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God? This was Sadhguru Maharaji from somewhere, and he told me to sit down, sit down, and I asked him, well, you know what? I finally just looked at all these college students, hundreds of them, and I said, look, if you say you're a Christian, you believe Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, then I want to encourage you. Join me, get up, and let's get out of here. Do you know, people got up, they walked out, and one of the guys that walked out has been a minister for probably about 40 years, and he said, that night, I was so inspired by your actions, it was a life changer. I want to encourage you, be an ambassador for truth. Let's speak with civility. If you don't know about personal boycotts, Google it. Our boycotts biblical, and let's be bold as a lion in this crucial time of history. Hey friends, if you felt this video was helpful, make sure you like and subscribe so you get notified once new videos become available. Thanks.